I'm telling you this right now. It may seem like you're floundering where you're at. Because you're supposed to. You're not supposed to be where you're at. You're supposed to be in a different place. You're supposed to be at a higher place. So you're going to have to listen with the ears of your spirit. And the voice of the Lord will begin to talk to you and begin to lift you up and to put you as the person you're supposed to be and to put you in the place where you are called to be from the foundation of the earth. God has made a way for you. God has set a place for you. God has put a position for you. And you need to begin moving in that direction to begin to occupy it and stand there and be strong in the spirit and be the voice of victory in the place of position and authority that you're supposed to be in. Now, I'm going to get into this a little bit farther along the line, hopefully maybe next week. Well, what just happened there, whether you knew it or not, was prophecy. And people would say they don't recognize it because they don't hear it. They'll sit there and they'll go, well, he just preaches. Well, I got news for you. That's what prophets do. They're supposed to be preachers. And in the preaching of the word is a higher level that will take you farther. And people who don't know it just goes, well, he, he just preached. Or he taught us about something. Yeah, but within that, if you have ears to hear, you will have heard that the word of the Lord came forth. And then if you'll sit on the wings of that word, that word will take you to a higher place that you can't go to without it. We thank you, Holy Ghost, that you are here and alive and present. You are God in the earth today. I worship you. I ask you to bless these people here this morning. Open their ears. I'm asking you to bring them up to a different level, a different position in the spirit, a different place where they can walk and talk and think. Fato best to taste your braces. I'm asking you quickening in that realm that we may live there with you in the blessings that you have for us and affect change in the earth. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Hmm. You going to get something out of this yes. this morning? Yes, Matthew chapter 10, 40. He that receives you receives me, and he that receives me receives him that sent me. And he that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. He that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. Well, we have a couple of things here that needs to happen. First of all, you need to know what ministry gift you're dealing with in order to receive the reward of that ministry gift. And a lot of people are used to the pastor. They understand the pastor. A lot of people are used to the evangelist. And from the evangelist, you usually expect to get saved and, and maybe healed. And then from the pastor, you, used to, you usually expect to get comforted and shepherded, you know, with a shepherd crook. And they keep you going in the right direction. And that's all well and good. They're all legitimate offices. But the office of the prophet is a little bit different in that it will do something else. And you're privileged to be able to be in partnership and in association with the office of the prophet. And that's really what I'm going to talk about this morning. And, and, and the only way you can really receive the benefit of that is to know what it is, know how to be in cooperation with that anointing and gift, and then you're in partnership with it. Then what does it say? You'll receive the prophet's reward. All right? I have responsibility to magnify the office. If you can respect that office and be able to hear and cooperate with those gifts, you'll receive benefits from the office. Then you'll be able to profit by it. Does this make sense? Let's see. Second Chronicles 20. How many of you want to profit? <laughs> okay. Well, I'm showing you a way. I'm showing you another level and a, and a way to profit, especially here. You've been partners with me. You've been there. Now it's time to reap. Okay? And so what I want you to do is see how you're going to be able to reap. Say, see, see. how I'm going to be able to, how I'm going to, be able to <laughs> reap. <laughs> Reaping's a good thing. Yes, it is. You know, and what, re reaping's a big part of what the body of Christ has left out. 
They're not bad at sowing. They're not bad at, you know, loving. They're not bad at, but at reaping, they leave it out. And unfortunately, if you don't know how to reap, you're not going to have the harvest that you need to be able to sow more. That's how farmers expand their, their territory is they save more from what they reaped last time so they can sow more the next time. Yeah. And being partakers with the prophet's office and ministry opens up a, a whole new level of profiting. Yeah. It's a whole new world. It's like you're looking over, you know, you climb up to the, the knoll of a hill and then all of a sudden you see the rest of it. People are all caught up in their little valley and they don't see anything. They're caught up there. And it's nice because shepherds can shepherd them in that little valley. But then somebody will take you up on a hill and all of a sudden you'll see, oh my goodness, there's a whole world out there. And sometimes you need that office to break open something in you. Well, I don't need anything. Yes, you do. And I'm telling you, if you can hear, say hear. Yeah. If you can hear what I'm getting across today, it will take you to another level. It will take you to a new place. Amen. I can take you there. Amen. I will read this. This is what God told me. He says, tell them this. He says, tell them this. I can get you to prosper, but I have to get you to cooperate with the office. Tell them this, I can get you to prosper, but I have to get you to cooperate with the office. But in that gift, when I'm under that anointing and I'm in that office, I know that within that, and guess what? It's not for me. The office isn't for me. The gift isn't for me. It's for you. And particularly those who partner with it and know how to partner with it and know they're going to they're going to get the benefit of it. All right. Second Chronicles, chapter 20 and verse 20. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood on and said, hear me, O Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God. So shall you be established. Say, believe, believe. in the Lord, your God. the Lord your God. So shall I, so shall I. Be, established. be established. We have a lot of people who believe in the Lord their God and they are established. They're established Christians. They're established in their church, but they're established in the Lord their God. And it says, believe his prophets. So shall you prosper. And here's the other level. So being established, we would look at a Christian and go, oh, that person's established at least. They're a believer. They go to church. They have a good family, blah, blah, blah. But believing in his prophets will take you to a prosperity that you can't get by just being established in God. Right. Are you here? Yes. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophets, and so shall you prosper. How can they believe unless they hear? And Jesus had to do that. And people say, well, you're just talking about yourself. No, you're, he's Jesus and Paul and myself. That's pretty good company to be in. I might as well buddy up next to them. They talked about the office. They talked about the anointing. When Jesus came, he never said, I am Jesus. I'm the Lord. Bow your knee and you'll be healed. He said, the spirit of the Lord is on me. And when you say that, you mean you're standing in and off. They knew that. In, in the Old Testament, they knew it. The Spirit of the Lord was only on the prophet and the king and the priest. This is going to help you out. There's benefits to partnering with the prophet's office. Do you understand that? So you're, the, when you partner... And by coming, you're, you're partnering. And by giving, you're partnering. You're partaking in an office and an anointing. And if you know how to continue therein, you will prosper to a degree that you can't outside of that. And I've said this before. If you continue, say continue. If you continue, you will be healed and live in divine health. You will be prosperous and delivered from all debts and live in divine wealth. 
You will be established in everything. Say everything. Everything Everything that God's called you to do. It's a guarantee if you continue. But the problem is we have people that don't continue. First of all, they don't recognize the anointing or the office. And second of all, they don't continue. This is going over big. You know, and, and I've, I've, heard, I've heard messages on both sides as well. You shouldn't talk about it. If you don't talk about it, then people can't believe in it, and then they can't operate the right way with it. It's not that I, I need people to go, you are a prophet. and Oh, prophet Andrew, prophet. No, that's, that's not it at all. In fact, when I'm, when I'm not under the owner, I'm just goofy as anybody else. But when you respect Say respect. Respect the office and the anointings that's there. That's what you're respecting. You know, you can think of the president. He's just a man. I don't care what president he was. He's just a man. But when he enters the office, a office, it's the office that you respect. And I, I'll use this illustration because it, it, it influenced me to a degree. I remember when George Bush came into office and he had a he had a policy that in the oval office in in the white house in the oval office you had to have a tie on you had to have a coat on and you had yet there was a dress code in the office and he said the thing that disturbed him and not whether you like president clinton or not that's that's not the point. I'm just trying to get a point over here. He saw pictures of pre- former President Clinton in the Oval Office in his sweatpants and his sweatshirt having coming in from a run. And it just it said it did. It bugged him to him. He wasn't respecting the office. And so when George Bush came in, he said, if anybody's in this office, they're going to they're going to be clean. They're going to they're going to wear a shirt and tie. Right. It's, and, and so I'm making a point with that. You see. What I'm saying? So, I mean, they're still a man, but when they're in the office, you respect the office. I have to respect the office. And if God's putting me in an office, I have to respect it. I have to magnify it. Let's go there. Go to Romans 11, 13. And like I said, you have an opportunity here. A lot of people don't have this opportunity. A lot of people can go for years and years and years and years and years to church and be blessed and be happy but they don't have the opportunity to be in partnership with a gift that will take them there. Where? To that next level of prosperity. I'm telling you this right now. It may seem like you're floundering where you're at because you're supposed to. You're not supposed to be where you're at. You're supposed to be in a different place. You're supposed to be at a higher place. So you're going to have to listen with the ears of your spirit. And the voice of the Lord will begin to talk to you and begin to lift you up and to put you as the person you're supposed to be and to put you in the place where you are called to be from the foundation of the earth. God has made a way for you. God has set a place for you. God has put a position for you. And you need to begin moving in that direction to begin to occupy it and stand there and be strong in the spirit and be the voice of victory in the place of position and authority that you're supposed to be in. Now, I'm going to get into this a little bit farther along the line, hopefully maybe next week. But what just happened there, whether you knew it or not, was prophecy. And people would say they don't recognize it because they don't hear it. They'll sit there and they'll go, well, he just preaches. Well, I got news for you. That's what prophets do. They're supposed to be preachers. And in the preaching of the word is a higher level that will take you farther. And people who don't know it just goes, well, he he just preached. Or he taught us about something. Yeah, but within that, if you have ears to hear, you will have heard that the word of the Lord came forth. And then if you'll sit on the wings of that word, that word will take you to a higher place that you can't go to without it. Did you hear that? Yes, I did. <laughs> Glory be to God forever. Yeah. But this is good. Yes, it is. You see what I'm saying? So you, there, you have to have ears to hear. Because if you don't have ears to hear, woe be unto you. Even Jesus said that. He that has ears to hear. He must have said some wild things that just went over everybody's head. 
head to, but they were like, well, I know he was talking about a fish in a, in a basket and a candle. <laughs> it was good, though. It was good. I enjoyed it. We're gonna get it. But it's not entertainment. and be, Like, you have the unique position and opportunity to partner. Say partner. Partner, partner with this anointing that will take you somewhere. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Romans eleven thirteen. For I speak... To you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify my office. So inasmuch as he was an apostle, he had to magnify his office. And so the only way that, it, you know, from my perspective, the only way that I'm going to be in as much as I'm going to be what I'm called to be, I'm going to have to magnify the office. Did it say he magnifies himself? Inasmuch as I'm an apostle to the Gentiles, I magnify myself. I'm highly magnified and thoroughly educated. <laughs> no, I'm highly. No, he says he magnifies the office, which gives people the opportunity to go. That's the office. <clears throat> now I'm going to invest my time and my effort to try to get what's ever in that office for me. And uniquely with the prophet's office, there's prosperity. Praise Say prosperity. God. Maybe you don't want prosperity. Yes, no prosperity. But guess what? It doesn't come the way you wanted it to. <laughs> that felt good. But it just doesn't come the way you wanted it to or the way you expected it to. It comes from heaven. It comes from God and it comes through his method. And if you want what he has, you got to get it his way. You get it? I magnify my office. Yeah. So he's got to magnify the office. Now, a lot of people would say, don't magnify the office. Don't. Really, what they're saying is just shut up. You're bothering me. <laughs> Let's go over there. We'll go over to uh, Luke. Luke chapter 4, 14. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. There went out a fame of him throughout all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. Let me just bring out this point right now, lest I forget it. Did they receive him in Nazareth? And we'll talk about that in a minute. Did they receive him? No. He's about ready to magnify his office, and they wouldn't receive it. So they're not going to receive the blessing that came with it. He's about ready to say, here's the blessing. I'm in this office. Here's the blessing. But they didn't receive it. And why didn't they receive it? Because they saw him. They didn't like it. They thought he was puffing himself up. Aren't you Joseph's son, the carpenter? Come on. They were unwilling to receive what? Not him. They were unwilling to receive that he was in an office now. Right. Are you here? Yeah. All right. And they came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he'd opened the book, say open the book. Open the book. He found the place. They found the place where it was written. Does this sound, does this sound intentional? Yes. Yeah. Or did he go like this? And when he'd, when he'd Ouija board the book... <laughs> A scripture popped out. No, he knew what he was doing, and he said it was as his custom was. And in a vision, the Lord Jesus told Kenneth E. Hagin, my spiritual dad, he said, I preached this everywhere I went. This was my message. Do you see this? This is why it's containing this in your Bible. In fact, if you read it and you look it up, that'll be his message to you every day. <laughs> but he came to town. He found the place as his custom was. He stood up to read, grabbed the book, opened it up to this place and said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me. This was his method message. What was on him? The spirit of the Lord. That meant he was consecrated. He was set into something. The spirit of the Lord is approving him on him because he has set. He has sent me to preach. You get it? 
Well, they didn't receive that. They didn't want it. So obviously they're rejecting the fact that the Spirit of the Lord's on him and that he sent him to do this. So really, they're not, just re they're not just rejecting him. They're rejecting the anointing in the Spirit of the Lord that's on him. Right. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach. And then he begins to list the benefits. Now, if they would have received him and they would have received the anointing, they would have received the benefits. So what I'm trying to get you to do is see that we have something here. There's a gift and there's an office and there's an anointing and then there's benefits that come along with the anointing. But you have to receive them and you have to believe. Say believe. And so many times we're, we're as, as preachers, we're trying to get people into belief. Well, faith comes by what? hearing and hearing by the word of God. But I got news for you and I'll get into this a little bit hopefully next week is that the hearing of a word from God from a prophet carries a little more weight than just a teaching out of a scripture or an encouragement from another ministry gift because it comes as tell them this. It comes as this is what the Spirit of God is saying to you right now. And with that word comes the ability to produce itself. And if you don't hear it and you don't receive it that this is coming from the Spirit of God, then it can't produce itself in your life. But if you hear it from the Spirit of God, coming from a prophet of God, coming into your spirit, and you receive it that way, into a good heart, it will begin to produce. And you can run with that. It'll take you to a new place. Welcome to church. Well, this is fun. Hear and be changed. Hear and be changed. That's why, I mean, I say that all the time. You're ready to be changed. You're ready to hear the word. You're ready. Because that's how it happens. You get changed. get changed. It's the number one message. It's always that way. I'm looking for you to give me a personal prophecy, a word. <laughs> well, you can get those. You can call 1-800-WACKO on the phone, and they'll give you a word, too. I don't want it that way. I want you to give me a specific... I, I am. It's coming from the Spirit of God. But He's going to change you. And you know, guess what? That's the number one thing that, that God does to everybody. Almost unequivocally. When His Word comes, He's requiring you to change. I got news. You could run for president if you change. <laughs> you could do anything you wanted to if you change. And you can do anything in God if you change. Does that make sense? It's just that we have not changed enough to see what we need to do. You should go, and, and the bigger the problem, the bigger the situation, you should be going, I need to change more. If we change, we'll be able to see how to do things. I'm trying to show you that when you change, you become someone else. You start to act like someone else. You start to say things that are like someone. I got news for you. That's what the office of the prophet does, even for me specifically. I may be at home and I'm thinking, what am I going to say? I'll put a right bunch of things in no apparent order on a piece of paper. I'm like, you know, here we go. <laughs> but then I get under the anointing and I see what I have to do. I'm changed into a different person. The anointing of the office changes me. The anointing of the office changes you and you become someone else. And by yourself, you might have crumbled under that situation. But in that office, you don't. In that office, you're a machine. In that office, you're unconquerable. In that office, forget about it. It's you and the angels and the wisdom of God, and there's nothing that can stop you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you here? Yes. All right. Yeah, but I still don't know what to do. Hold on. <laughs> see, but, but see, we're trying to look for a thing of what do I do, what do I do. The what do I do is change. I change because when I change, I know what to do. And the faster we can change, I hope you're hearing this. Hello. The faster you can change. Say this. The faster I can change is the faster I can partake of the prosperity 
and position that God has for me. Did that, did that come across? But God has things for you again. God has things for you that he wants you to do. And the only way, the only way that you can do it is to change. And the faster you can change, the quicker you can enter into it and be what you're called to be, Shakamahandai. Brother, I don't want to change. Well, then woe be unto you. I feel bad for you. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. What did Jesus say? The Spirit of the Lord is upon him because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. What was the first benefit that Jesus said the Spirit of the Lord was upon him? What was the first benefit of receiving? Now listen, you got to remember what I said. What the people that receive and believe the Spirit of the Lord was on Jesus... And he was going to be saying something and preaching something. And if they heard it, what was the first benefit? They don't have to be poor no more. The gospel to the poor is good news to the poor. Isn't that, guess what? When you die, you're going to have fields of, of wheat and mansions. That's not good news. I mean, it's good news in the sense that when you die, at least you got a good place to go. But they knew that already. What they needed was some money or some situation or some way. Well, the first thing that Jesus said was a benefit of receiving his ministry, his ministry of the prophet. And we'll get down here in a bit. The ministry as a prophet with the spirit of the Lord on him was it would take him out of poverty. Kills poverty. Destroys it. The anointing destroys the yoke of bondage. And poverty is a yoke of bondage. And God is upset that his people are, are under it. He wants to destroy that thing. But the only way to destroy it is not some method, not some program. It is by submitting your ears to what the Spirit is saying and changing and letting it change you and submitting to that change and then Guess what? You come out of it. God. Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to what? Heal. 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 It's another benefit. Heal. Isn't that good? Yeah. That's why I say if people will continue, and it's not because I'm some great thing. I'm not. But I know the anointing prospers people. It heals people. It delivers people. It sets them straight. Do you understand that? And by me magnifying that office, you will be prospered. You will be healed. You will be delivered. You will be set where you're supposed to be. But it requires change. Oh, well. Glory. Jesus is Lord. Oh, he hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to preach deliverance to the captives. Glory. To declare it. Are you here? Yeah. Can people get delivered by preaching? Yes, it's the number one way here. Sure, you can cast demons out of people, but the number one way is to hear. And it's the same way with healing. It's the same way with prosperity. The number one way is to hear, receive the word, and let the anointing that's in that word change you and drive the poverty out. Change you and drive the sickness out. Change you and drive the devils away. Change you and drive the lack out. Are you here? Yeah. The anointing does it. But you got to do the word. You got to be a doer of the word. Ooh. Preach deliverance to the captives, recovering a sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Preach the acceptable year of the Lord. He closed the book, gave it again to the minister, and sat down, and the eyes of all them were on him in the synagogue. Now, did he just say, okay, this, this is the only ministry here, and we don't, we don't need the pastor of the church who is the minister of that? No, he didn't do that. He did what he was supposed to do and then sat down. And the eyes of all of them that were in the synagogue was, were fastened on him why do you think their eyes were fastened on him they couldn't believe it they were that they, they, i don't believe it yeah, 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 yeah. and he began to say to them this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears Ooh, wow. where was it fulfilled in their ears, in their ears. <laughs> but it wasn't going to be fulfilled in their life 
unless they received it. You've got scripture being fulfilled in your ears. Now it's your job to hear it. Say hear it. And believe it and then to do it and to receive it. Believe, believe in the Lord your God so you shall be established. Believe his prophets so shall you prosper. Well, the word of the Lord comes to you today and you have the option as it comes into your ear and is fulfilled to receive it and say, that's for me. I believe in the office of the prophet. That's my prophet. And therefore I'm going to profit. That's probably why he calls it prophet, prophet. Just spelled a little differently. <laughs> some people don't like prophets, and some people don't like prophets. <laughs> so I don't believe in prophets. Well, then you don't believe in prophets. <laughs> um, no prophet, no prophet. He began to say unto them, that, remember, he began. This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. And I'll bear him witness and wonder that the gracious words have proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, is not this Joseph's son? Uh-oh. And they said unto him, and he said unto them, you will surely say to me this proverb, physician, heal thyself. Whatsoever we have heard done in Capernaum, also do here in thy country. And he said, verily I say unto you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. What did Jesus just call himself? He said, this office that he was ministering to people in was the office of the prophet. It didn't die with the last apostle. It is the still, still the same office. It's still the same Holy Ghost who puts people in the office. In fact, the Holy Ghost put Jesus in this office. And then he said, the spirit of the Lord's on me to stand in this office. And if you will hear and believe and receive, you will be prospered you will be healed you will be delivered do you get it yes. he was magnifying the office not himself well glory be to god forever Shoo. let's see go down to verse uh 32 we'll skip ahead here and he came down to capernaum a city of galilee and taught them on the sabbath days and said and they were astonished at his doctrine for his what was with power his word was with power. And what word was it? The same word. A word was with power to fulfill it in their ears. And when that word comes to your ear, you have a choice. I'm either going to receive it and believe it or I'm, and prosper, or I'm going to not receive it, reject it, and not prosper from that. You getting anything out of this this morning? Philippians 1, 7, we'll try to end with this. Now, don't think that I'm just sitting here trying to lift myself up. I'm not. I'm nothing. I'm nobody. I'm, I'm more of a nobody than anybody. <laughs> Paul would even say that, wouldn't he? But it's the office. Yeah. And I have to honor the office. I have to be faithful and respect the office. And the only, one way that I can do that is to magnify the office. Do you see that? Because then that gives you the opportunity to partner with the office, to be a partaker of the office, and to prosper by it. And that's the thing I really want more than anything. You may not know it or not, but, but I don't sit home and go, I can't wait to get my... roll around in my money. I can't wait. I, what I really want is you to prosper. I get no, no greater kick than seeing you being made the CEO of the corporation. Yes. I get no greater kick than seeing you being the, the number one and the best yes. in everything. Yes. Yes. Well, don't you want your airplanes? Yeah, but I want you to buy them for me. Hallelujah. <laughs> and who's greater? Yes. What did Jesus say? Yes. Who's greater, the one who gets the gift or the one who gave it? Gave it. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> Which one's greater? I'm telling you, 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 you got it all wrong. If it, and that's the problem with this message. And a lot of why I lie, but a lot of prophets that are called to be prophets don't preach it this way is because they cave under the thought that other people are going to think I'm magnifying myself. When I'm not, I'm magnifying the office so that it can produce the way it needs to produce. Yeah. It's why they hated Jesus in Nazareth because he said, I'm anointed. Yeah. Philippians 1, 7. Even as... It is meet for me to think this of you all because I have you in my heart 
inasmuch as both in my bonds and in the deference and confirmation of the gospel, you all are partakers of my grace. When you partner with a prophet, or any other gift, really, but when you partner with a prophet, you are what? A partaker of his grace. And I don't have time to develop this, but everything Paul talked about that he did was by the gift and grace of God. He is an apostle by grace. He does all the gift and ministry by grace. And when you partner with him, you are partakers of his the same, say the same, the same grace. Does that make you a prophet? No, but you don't have to be. You're partakers of that anointing and you partake of the same grace. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you right now for this opportunity to be partakers of, of the anointing from the office of the prophet. And, we, and I respect it, and we honor it, and we thank you right now. And we, we receive this morning's tithes and offerings as partnership and partakers of this grace. And Father, we thank you that by doing this, the anointing is on this offering. The anointing is on these people's hands and lives on a new level. And this is what the Spirit of God says. The new level has come to you today. So receive it and begin to say, I'm in a new place. I'm in a new way. I'm thinking differently. I'm acting differently because the grace is greater. The grace is stronger. And the grace will take me to a higher place. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Your God.